All right, this time I'm going to show you the real power of this stove. Uh, if you're in environments where it's extremely cold or extremely damp and wet, um, you can set this stove up to boil uh, two cups of water in really bad weather conditions by using only the outer can and the windscreen. Uh, the combination of the two will create a two-walled stove. Uh, here I'm going to give you a demonstration. Also, if you want to boil larger quantities of water, um, I'm going to give you a demonstration using this percolator. There's, uh, I think, six cups of water in here. Basically, take the supplied lid and use it as a bottom or a base for the stove. This not only minimizes ground scarring, but it will also act as a vapor barrier, so, so no ground moisture will be drawn up into the stove. And then at this point, when you fill it, again, to one half inch to three quarters of an inch down from the top. This time to start the fire, I'm going to use a uh, fire stick. Light the fire stick. Get it going. Drop it in. And then build another layer of wood over the top kind of quickly. After about four minutes, the wood will drop into the burning chamber, starting the layer of wood underneath it. The flames will be strong, sustained. Put your cooking pot stand on top of the stove. And then place your windscreen over the top. Basically, we'll just let this sit for a while for it to start to cook. About 16 minutes have gone by, and as you can see, it's starting to percolate. Uh, I'm going to let this cook for about four minutes, and then I'm going to remove it, and then the remaining heat I'm going to use to cook scrambled eggs. So not only can I boil six cups of water and make a nice pot of coffee, but I can also cook eggs on one load of fuel using this configuration. All right, this thing's been percolating about four minutes, so this should be good for a good cup of good pot of coffee. I'm going to set this up on the side. I have two eggs I'm going to cook with the remaining fuel. Basically, what you want to do is open up the, the windscreen a little bit. Again, I wrap the uh, frying pan in tin foil to make it for easy cleanup. We'll let that sit for a couple minutes and I should have scrambled eggs. Well, another couple minutes have gone by and you can see that there's still a fairly strong flame there. And voila! There's a couple scrambled eggs. And there's still a good flame coming out of the, uh, the stove. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the uh, percolator back on top. Readjust the windscreen so that there's about a half inch gap 
between the screen and the cooking pot. And this is right about now the fire is starting to die down and it should go out in about oh, 20 seconds. And at this point I'm going to leave it like this and the coals that are generated in the bottom of the stove will keep the pot warm for at least a half hour. One last thing I wanted to uh, make note when using this configuration. If you want to slow down the cooking process to make it even longer than 30 minutes, what you can do is the air intake ports, even though there's no second can on the inside to make an adjustment, you can take dirt and pile it up to cover the holes to control the uh, time and the heat output. If you're going to do that, I would leave at least one hole open and you can cover as much as three and uh, that will even give you longer cooking times and um, it will also tone down the heat so it won't be so hot. So this is a very versatile stove. You can cook using a lot of different configurations. Uh, as you saw with this demonstration, I was able to boil six cups of water and make a full pot of coffee and I was able to also cook a couple of eggs all on one loading of fuel. Uh, you don't add additional fuel to this stove when you start cooking. You load it one time, you light it, and you walk away. That's the beauty of this design. Well, I'd like to thank you for stopping by. Have a good day.